Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the sequel to 2019 Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, features a young Jedi Knight by the name of Cal Kestis who has had to overcome seemingly impossible odds in order to become the hero he is and continue his fight to free the galaxy from the iron grip of the Empire. In honor of the release of this new amazing chapter in Cal's journey, we thought we'd take the time to take a closer look at his history and tell all of you the epic and tragic tale of the legendary Cal Kestis. Let's begin. And yes, potential spoilers ahead. During the final years of the Galactic Republic, Cal became a member of the Jedi Order. As a youngling, he traveled with Master Yoda to Ilum, an icy, desolate world, so that he could take part in an ancient Jedi rite of passage known as the Gathering. Along with his fellow initiates, Cal was tasked with retrieving a Kyber crystal so that he could build his very own lightsaber. Kestis was still a youngling when the Clone Wars began in 22 BBY, and while he didn't really struggle with his training and lightsaber skills, he didn't deal with failure or adversity very well. He was thus assigned to Jedi Master Jaro Topol, who taught him that, by persisting in using the Force, he could overcome virtually any obstacle. Later as a Padawan, Cal learned more about the Force and served as a Jedi Commander alongside Topol. Then in 19 BBY, Order 66 compelled the clone troopers under the Pair's command to turn against them. However, Topol sensed a disturbance in the Force and killed the clone commander before he could order his troops to execute him and Cal. Unfortunately, while trying to escape, Cal lost his lightsaber, and his master was fatally wounded by blaster fire from a group of clone troopers. Although the Jedi managed to flee, Topol died shortly after begging Cal to stay true to the Jedi way and trust only in the Force. Cal was then forced to go into hiding to escape the Great Jedi Purge initiated by the Rising Galactic Empire. He joined the Scrapper Guild and worked as a rigger on the junkyard planet of Bracca for about 5 years or so, hiding his true identity and master's lightsaber while slowly losing his connection with the Force. Then one day in 14 BBY, when an accident put Cal's friend Prouf's life at risk, Cal had no choice but to use the Force to save him. Unfortunately, this drew the attention of the Inquisitorius, who sent the Second and Ninth Sisters to Bracca to find Cal. When the second sister coldly executed Prauf, Cal attacked her in anger. After the ninth sister grabbed him and suspended him over a cliff, he managed to escape but had to run for his life once again. Grease Dritus and Seer Junda, a former Jedi Knight, let Cal aboard their ship, the Stinger Mantis, so that the young Jedi could escape Bracca. After some hesitation, Cal agreed to support Junda's mission to restore the Jedi Order. Along with his new friends, Cal traveled to the grassy planet of Bagano in the Outer Rim. Junda then proceeded to show Cal the Bagano Vault, a large building she believed contained the necessary elements to rebuild the Jedi Order. After reaching the vault, Cal's droid BD-1 projected a message from Jedi Master Eno Cordova, which informed Cal that, in order to gain access to a holocron with a list of young Force sensitives, he would need to first find the tomb of three Zepho sages. After some deliberation with Grease and Junda, Cal decided to set course for Zepho. Upon arrival, Cal entered the tomb of Elrim and found another message from Cordova, instructing him to travel to Kashyyyk to find the Wookiee chieftain Tarful. After visiting Dathomir and escaping a Night Sister and a group of Night Brothers, Cal and his friends traveled to Kashyyyk as instructed by Cordova. The crew soon found themselves caught up in a battle between the Empire and an early group of rebels. Cal assisted Saw Gerrera in reclaiming a nearby Rosha sap refinery and helped free the imprisoned Wookiees. And while the young Jedi didn't find Tarful, one of the liberated Wookiees, Choisik, and a member of Saw's guerrillas, Mari Kosan, agreed to find Tarful for the young Jedi. Cal then had to make his way back to Zepho to stop the Empire from breaching Mictral's tomb. There he faced the second sister, who revealed herself to be Trilla Suduri, Junda's former Padawan. Suduri managed to gain the upper hand, but BD-1 intervened and saved Cal. After narrowly avoiding falling to his death, on his way out of the tomb, Cal and BD-1 found another encrypted log from Cordova that spoke of the Astrium, the key that would be needed to unlock the Bagano Vault. However, before Cal could get back to the Mantis, he was captured by a Haxion brood bounty hunter and forced to fight in Sork Tormo's Colosseum. After defeating many deadly creatures as well as the bounty hunter that had captured him in BD-1, the Mantis crashed through the Haxion brood's lair to rescue Cal and his droid. Mari Kassan then contacted the crew to inform them that Tarful had been located and had agreed to meet with Cal. Cal and his friends returned to Kashyyyk, and after battling their way through the recaptured refinery, Tarful instructed Cal to climb the Origin Tree. Once he had completed the ascent, Cal and BD-1 discovered a Zepho Astrium and learned that the Tomb of Dathomir may hold another. Before he could depart, Cal faced the Ninth Sister, but after slicing off her hand and flinging her off the top of the Origin Tree, he returned to the Mantis and left for Dathomir. Upon arrival, Cal was ambushed by Night Brothers and forced to traverse the planet's deadly swamps. There Cal faced the giant beast Gorgara, and following an intense aerial battle, the creature was slain. 
Kel was then attacked by a vision of his master Joro Tapal, causing him to lose his lightsaber. Terran Malakos, a former Jedi now studying the ways of the dark side, asked Kel to join him. However, after Night Sister Meren raised a horde of undead to kill the two, Kel and BD-1 were able to only narrowly escape. Kel then made his way back to Ilum to find another Kaaba crystal and rebuild his lightsaber, and by combining Junda's and Tapal's hilts, he was able to create a new double-bladed lightsaber. Kel then discovered an Imperial mining operation on Ilum to extract Kaaba crystals, and after some struggle, he and BD-1 managed to reach the Mantis and make their way back to Dathomir once again. Kel faced Tapal's spectre and embraced his past, causing the apparition to disappear. He then spoke to Night Sister Meren and won her trust by passing her his lightsaber and disavowing Malakos as a fallen Jedi. Meren and Kel then faced off against and defeated Malakos and worked together to find an Astrium. Upon finding the device, Kel, Meren, and the rest of the crew traveled back to Bagano. At the same time, the second sister ordered her troops to depart for the planet after finding a data pad in a Zepho temple on Ontotho. Kel brought the Astrium to the vault and opened the holocron, but then the second sister attacked him, leading to a prolonged duel where Kel managed to come out on top by pulling his attacker's lightsaber into his possession. After the second sister and the holocron vanished, Kel boarded the Mantis, with Junda taking the Inquisitor's lightsaber and knighting him. Kel and Junda then ventured to the Fortress Inquisitorius on Nur, where he once again faced off against the second sister. Kel managed to wound her right shoulder and disabled her, but then Lord Vader himself struck her down. Junda and Kel faced off against Vader, but the Sith Lord was able to hurl Junda into the fortress chasm and make short work of Kel, who only managed to narrowly escape after Vader threw him out of the room they were fighting in. However, Vader intercepted him again and nearly killed Kel, but thanks to BD-1's intervention, Kel managed to wound Vader, though not fatally. He and Junda then faced Vader again, and by damaging some glass keeping a large volume of water out, Kel created a distraction so that he and Junda could escape. After awakening on the Mantis, Kel decided to destroy the Holocron in order to keep the children on the list safe from the Empire. Between 14 and 11 BBY, Kel continued his travels with the crew of the Stinger Mantis and even managed to infiltrate and destroy a Hexion brood base located within the ruins of a destroyed world. Then in 9 BBY, Kel encountered an enemy with a red lightsaber and lost his own blade during the duel. It was then delivered to an Imperial Powan Senator. He also discovered someone in a Bacta tank and set them free. This mysterious character subsequently informed the young Jedi of his betrayal by someone close to him. And that, my friends, is the somewhat abridged story of Cal Kestis. What did you think of this tale? I know I didn't include every little detail, so if there's something crucial you think I should have mentioned, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so I can keep bringing you awesome gaming VR and tech content on a regular basis. That's all for now. From me and the Knight Brothers and Sisters here at Metasquad, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Later!